Oh, let's go, y'all. Oh shit. Okay. Phones is off, fam. What? 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 The people what? alive. What? What? Oh, here we go. What? And this is how I'll be the one to take the risk to go yeah. into the bands. I'll be the one to never sit and go and make the plan. Knowing my mother getting yeah. old and I don't got no time. Gotta keep a couple for the road, the rest get left behind. Yeah. To the hundreds, pledge allegiance, I stand. I'm a gold pro four in the fucking white sand. I give it all to this fucking mic stand. If it's been done before, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, 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 okay. Like I feel like D Rose when they came off with the All Star game. Okay. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay, okay, okay. Yo, what's the deal, y'all? Hope all is well. Welcome back to another episode. I'm Duke. I'm Omar. I'm Jalan. I'm Melvin Gregg. Yes, sir. And this is nice and neat. Y'all, thank y'all for joining us today. We got an incredible guest today. Thank you, just thank to give you a couple of just just a, just a couple of highlights about this young man, you may have known him or seen him on Snowfall as Man Boy. Personally, one of my favorite characters on the show. I second he that. he really represented L.A. Bodied that. Bodied it. He bodied it. This yeah. man is not even from L.A. Just so you guys <laughs> don't, if y'all don't know that, you know. Um, he's from another talented place. We'll get into that throughout the episode. But I want to welcome Melvin Gregg. What's up, boss? How you doing, man? I appreciate you, man. You, man. I, that, that was a nice intro. Come on now. I Come on now. That. We got to give you your flowers while you're Absolutely. still here. While you're still here. But thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, yeah. I know we appreciate you being here, bro. Thanks. It's thank huge, you. man. Thank you. Thank, you. thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's up, man? How you feeling? I'm good, bro. Huh? I'm good. I'm chilling. You, you know working, I mean? man? Working. Working, family good. I can't complain. Talk yeah. to us, man. We what, are, what's the ahead. family situation like? I think we were speaking earlier before we got on camera, right? You said you were um, newly engaged? Yeah, uh, Mother's Day. Whatever date that was, I should probably okay. know it, right? Mother's Day. Okay. Yeah, 10th, 11th, yeah, yeah, yeah. something around there. Uh, got engaged on Mother's Day. Um, got a one and a half year old. Congrats. You know I mean? How's that been, though? So, thank oh, you. Thank, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. So, so how's that been, though? How the, um, the, how, is there any significant change between, like, when you guys were just boyfriend girlfriend to in this process right now where you guys are fiancés no nah, not really or is it the same is is it's the same i i feel like right after the engagement i kind of felt a little you know excitement but it kind of <laughs> kind of talking about yep, a little, yep. it kind of wear off a little bit um but i mean we've been together for, for so long yeah. back and forth like i met her in 2011 so yeah. and we had already had an understanding of what we were you know what yeah. i mean we the same thing we will be when we, we will be when we get married, and the same thing we are right now as fiancés was the same thing that we were before. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Um, we got engaged, so we always had an understanding. Yeah. We had already, you know, what I mean, got a house together, had a baby, so yeah. we had already pretty much locked into what we are. The, yeah. the engagement thing um, just kind of solidified it, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Hey, being engaged, and this is for both of you, O and Melvin. Do you guys feel like y'all should have a ring through the engagement process too? Are y'all y'all cool with not having a ring? That's funny because Candace just said this the other day that she was like, "Yo, I, I wish that Omar had a, had a ring too." You know, right now in this process, <laughs> nobody can know. He, nobody, so knows he nobody, just, nobody knows we're engaged, so we know? could just be flashing our shit too, like they yeah. be doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man, I, I I believe in in the whole process, man, the traditional process of getting engaged and getting married, man. So, like, I mean, I don't think guys should should do it. You know, I, I think guys should officially put that ring on their finger. Once they, you know, jump the broom with their bride. So like that's, certain things is just for them. Certain things is just for them. And that's okay. And that's okay. Th 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 them the rules on that. Okay. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, you know, I, I mean, that's how I feel about it, you know? But yo, speaking of um, the having an understanding, like I know you said you've been with your girl for a long time. You've been quite the busy person, fam. I mean, we seen you at a premiere last night with some very familiar faces. We're seeing you on various different shows, man. I know you're working on a bunch of things behind the scenes, man. Like, just talk to us about how that goes, like trying to manage, you know, your personal life with your, your newborn, your fiance, yeah. and this this amazing career that you you begin to start for yourself. I uh, appreciate it, man. Um, balance, balance is the key for me. Just try, I'm still, I mean, trying to find it and, and learn what works best, but I mean, I keep office hours for the most part. I mean, if if I can avoid it, I don't work after five. Okay. Like yeah, yeah. I'm with my son until like ten in the morning. Um, he wakes up at like seven, so I'm with him from like seven till I put him down for his nap around ten o'clock, and then from ten to five, I try to get whatever work I need to get done done. As that includes meetings, um, training, uh, writing, whatever whatever I have to do. 
I do that then. So then after five, I can spend time with my family. Mm-hmm. And um, also the weekends. I try to take weekends off too. Because, you know, a lot of times as an artist, you can get not tricked in, but you can get caught up working 24-7. Know what I mean, because your creativity entrepreneur never artists, stops. You know? And you're an entrepreneur. And, you know what I mean, you want to hustle, you're going to work around the clock. And I mm-hmm. had times where I would do that nonstop. And it's, it's not good for any type of relationship. Mm-hmm. whether it be you and your girl or you and your child or you, whoever, I mean, um, and then for yourself either, you could burn yourself out. Yeah. But you don't feel like that's a sacrifice that a lot of people should make to to, to be great or to be successful? Yeah, it depends um, where you at right. in your career and what you're doing. Yeah. Because there's been years, I mean, where I just work 24-7. Yeah. I mean, I had got a production studio um, like a 4,000 square foot spot, and I was building offices constantly. I mean, in editing, I'm shooting 24 7 around the clock. And a lot of times, if that's what you're doing, it might not be the best for relationships. So, mm-hmm. the mature thing in some cases is, you know what I mean, to not have relationships at that yeah. time. But at the same time, too, you don't want to lose something that, you know what I mean, yeah. you hold dear to you. Mm-hmm. Right? I mean, like your girl or whatever the case may be. Like me and my fiance, we were together at one point. Right. I was a workaholic and it didn't work out, you know, breaking up. Oh. And, you know, over that time I continued to work, but I also realized too, like what's important. Mm-hmm. Work is important, but my happiness is important too. For sure, mm-hmm. I heard you. So I feel wow. that. So speaking of, speaking of like your habits and like I, that probably comes from a lot of people that's watching this probably noticed you from Vine, you know, uh, Instagram, mm-hmm. you know, you putting in those hours. Like that's one thing that people don't really know is just those hours that go into um, essentially creating a platform for yourself. Right. That's kind of like what social media has done. So like you were a, you were a top 25 Viner in the world at one point in time, yeah. right? Yeah. So that transition going from being in the social media space, right, to now, you know, and keep in mind when you're in the social media space, you were, you were that dude, you still that dude, but wow, being in the you, social man. media space, going from being one of the best that's doing that to you are saying like, man, I want to try, I want to try something new. I want to try something new. Did you go into social media with the anticipation that you wanted to be an actor or that was a lane that you was able to discover while doing it? Nah, it was, the goal was always acting. Um, I started acting in 2008 in Virginia in college and I worked out there for a couple years trying to do whatever jobs I could. Wasn't many jobs. I was doing like 700 club reenactments like somebody tell their testimony like yeah i was an alcoholic back in the day <laughs> and then it cut and i'm in the corner cutting up some coke with a oh, set man. Man. like just it, it wasn't like good work um so i was like if i really want to do this i gotta move to la so 2011 april 2011 i moved to la pursuing acting just doing commercials indie films working as a bartender worked in victoria's secret worked at like Scam stuff or any anything, <laughs> passing out drinks in front of <laughs> whatever elevens, yeah. whatever. whatever I could Hustling, to make money. Yeah. Yep. You know what I mean to support support me chasing chasing my dream, and um, I think around 2013, it was I just felt like I was just not hitting the wall. I was doing like little low budget films and stuff like that, but I couldn't get a uh, um, a legitimate agent because I didn't have any legitimate theatrical credits, mm-hmm. but I couldn't get the theatrical auditions because I didn't have the, the actual agent. So it was like a catch 22. Yeah. And then I looked at people that I saw working and I'm like, just trying to reverse engineers. Like, mm-hmm. What is, why are they working? Why are they yep. getting all of this stuff? Is It's not always talent, it's other stuff too. You know what I mean? Yep. Show business, part of it is the business. And um, I remember looking specifically at Lil Romeo, because at this time, Romeo Miller. ICDC College commercial? Or? Yeah. So. <laughs> I followed him on Instagram. Uh-huh. And I feel like every two weeks he was on a different project. Mm-hmm. Like how he's constantly working. Working, yeah. yeah. And even though is, his dad's Master P. Even though his dad, but he was doing stuff outside of Master P. And okay. he might have looking back at it in hindsight, he might have been producing stuff. Right, right. His dad probably was financing okay. stuff. But I was just looking but at he it working. like what yeah, yeah, and he still worked. But I was like, what is it that he's doing that I, I don't have? Yeah. Like, what is he doing differently? And I was like, he has a following, he has an audience. So he's more valuable mm. to a production. I was mm. going to school, for, I went to school for marketing when I mm. did go to school. So it was like, I always understood that part of it. So I was like, if I had an audience, I'd be more valuable to mm-hmm. any production. So why I have, you know what I mean, advantage over any other actor, mm. you know what I mean, who, who don't have an audience. And around the same time, Dropping game. Vine started popping. 
Mm-hmm. And, it, and it was crazy how it came about was was weird. So I had did this movie called uh, Cleaver Family Reunion. It was like low yep. budget yep. black movie. And um, this girl from Virginia I knew was like, yo, that's so dope. I wish I could do stuff like that. But I got a kid. I'm in Virginia. I can't. I was like, do Vine. Like, I mean, you could do that from anywhere. I knew what it was, but I won't mess with it. I didn't even know how to flip the camera around. Um, so she started <laughs> she started doing it and she popped off. Like in three months, she, she had like a million followers. I was like, yo, that's crazy. You you the one that told her to do it. I told her to do it, right? And then um, I remember she was telling me that she had got $7,000 to do a, a Klondike Vine. And at the time I had three roommates in a, in a no, I had four roommates in a two bedroom. We was all on food. Oh, seven thousand dollars gonna be life changing. I said life seven thousand yeah. for this little video. <laughs> yeah. Hey, 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 sign me up. I want to sign me up. Let me go back <laughs> to the drawing board. Yeah. So yeah, I, I just kind of <laughs> mapped what out what I wanted do? to do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What would I do? <laughs> the seven grand right so, now. So, so I mapped it out. So you saying that you was um, basically an aspiring actor, right? Yeah. Every time I hear aspiring actor, aspiring model, it's like, okay, so you're not there yet. Right, yep. right. Right? So how was that meeting people and saying, hey, what do you do? You say I'm an aspiring actor, right? Or what, what was your, like, what, what what was the thing that you identified yourself as? Um, Before you, you know, before popped I was off. Actually you know what I'm Yeah. And well, then, you were always really working. I was right. working. Yeah, right. Yeah. You never. You, you really. What you said is you've been working since two thousand eight. Now right. they weren't jobs that you may have necessarily been proud of, but right. You you've been working. I I hear a lot of people say like, and this is just for me. You know what I mean, I can't tell other people how to um, label themselves or whatever works for different different things work different for different people. But I hear a lot of people say like, never put aspiring like in your your mm-hmm. caption and stuff. Don't put aspiring. This is what you are. This is what you do. Mm-hmm. And um, I never really said aspiring, but I wouldn't tell people I was an actor. Right. Just because. They start asking you, questions. Yeah, they, like, they, they ask, like, what have you, what have you been in? Yeah. What have you done? <laughs> yeah. 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 What have you been and in? And then you know and, deep and down inside, yeah. you don't have nothing that you're proud of to really talk right. about. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Even to this day, like, people will ask me, and I they be like, oh, what have I seen you? I don't know what you watch, man. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, no. But let's <laughs> be clear. Know. Let's that, be clear. You got shit now that yeah. you, I've been, you should I've been definitely working, be proud of. I'm an actor now because that's how I pay my that's how I pay my bills. Hands down. I know you was good. Like, I was watching your snowfall, and it was an episode. I was like, I don't like him. And I know him. He's good. Yeah. I was like, he's that was a hurdle, man, to jump over with Snowfall because yeah. coming from social media, a lot of times to pop on social media, Don't you got to do different type of stuff. You got to you gotta target the, the biggest demo. Yeah. And that Vine, it was young white kids, suburban white kids. Mm-hmm. And that wasn't my demo. Like, I live in the hood my entire life. Like, I was socially awkward around white people when to college. Mm-hmm. Like I hadn't even really been around them. All my schools was all black. Yep. Yeah. So to understand that comedy was different, I had to see what worked and reverse engineer it. I'm like, okay, this is how this works. This is where this punchline hits. This is the, you know, I mean, a setup. Uh, I mean, comedy pays off in three. This is all of this different stuff. And I kind of taught myself comedy through looking at other people's videos mm-hmm. that work. Mm-hmm. And a lot of it was stuff that I didn't think was funny, like mm-hmm. slapstick stuff or me spinning girls in circles. And yeah. a lot of the stuff was corny to me. Yeah. But that's what I had to do to build this audience because at the end of the day, if you look at my profile and you see four million, you don't know who those four million people are. <laughs> right, right, it's just right. it's a currency right now. Right. Yeah. So um, I know coming out of that, people had a preconceived notion of who they thought I was. So for me to play something completely opposite, mm-hmm. which was closer to who I was, I'm playing a gangster. I mean, not saying I'm a gangster, but right. that is closer. I grew up around those yeah. people yeah. more so than the other stuff I was doing. So for people to see me as man boy was kind of hard the first few episodes. Like I'd be on Twitter, they'd be like, "Oh, why they cast him? That's mm-hmm. the corny nigga from Vine. Oh, why they mm-hmm. messing the show up? Give us some time, hey, y'all. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. Some time. it's like, hey, hey, let's go really grow, y'all. And it, is, and she it, cut deep. Yeah, it, dude. Yeah. Not, I guess that's the part of acting or just being in front of the camera that's kind of scary sometimes. Yeah. It's just being accessible. And seeing the criticism from other people, right? Because because you, it's your art, right? Yeah. Right, and it's what you put into it. You know what I'm saying? So, and you, if you're an artist, what they say about artists is sensitive about their shit. Yeah, right. So it does cut a little deep when it, you're saying, "Yo, what y'all talking about, bro?" But I, I would yeah. say it seems like the man that you are is like when you hear things it's like it's like, "Oh, okay, I'm about to prove that I'm bigger than not even big. I don't want to say bigger, but like there's more to me than just the social media aspect, right. of, of of my artistry." Is like I could really dive in and give you and dive into deep roles and give you meaningful like performances, word. you know, yeah. rather than just quick 
funny skits that last six seconds. Skits. And the quick funny skits is hard to do. Absolutely. And you look at a lot of the people, like movie stars that try to do social media, I mean, outside of Will Smith, and Will Smith still working with a minute, two, three, four minutes. Yeah. You know what I mean, he wasn't around doing lines for six, team. seven seconds. Yeah. That shit is hard yeah. to do seven second, 15 second comedy. You gotta wrap everything in a whole narrative in seven seconds. The way we used to do it, our brain was programmed like that. I'm like, okay, this setup is gonna be 1.3 seconds. Then this second, this second beat is gonna be another 2.1 seconds. That's gonna take me to 3.6. Wow. And then I got, like, this is how it's our brain science. was programmed at the time. Yeah. You know what I mean? But moving forward to try to go into acting, you got to kind of stop that. And I feel like that's where a lot of people get caught up and they don't transition over, in my opinion. Wow. Because you, what you do most is what you do best. And mm -hmm. Ooh, say, that do say that again. Ooh. Say that again. Say that again. Hold on. What you do oh. most is what you do best. Is that a nice and neat? Is that our <laughs> first guest? Nice, nice and neat original? <laughs> oh, yeah. Run that. Run uh, that. Run that. That's good. Yeah, man. So it's like. And the social media is demanding. If you take a week off, they say you fell off. So it's like, to try to be one foot in here and then do that, you gonna, you gonna spread yourself thin and you ain't gonna be as productive as you would be if you focus on one thing. Yeah. So I completely stopped social media at the end of 2017. I got depressed. I had a studio and it was at the height of my social media, I would say. Cause at this point, Facebook had just started um, doing monetization. Mm -hmm. So now I could recycle all the videos I didn't did <laughs> and, and, and make money. You know what I mean? So, and it's like, oh, Facebook is a whole different audience, which is the biggest social media platform in the world. Seven, I could introduce this content to. users a day. Bro, it's, it's ridiculous. Yep. And I was growing, I had one of the fastest growing pages on Facebook at the time. I was getting like 100,000 followers a day. Like I did- on Facebook. The last month I did, a hundred million views a week for five weeks straight. A hundred million views on all original content. I'm not taking viral moments. It's just all the stuff I created. I'm getting six figure checks. Like it's nice. I've never seen stuff like this, mm -hmm. but I was depressed because mm -hmm. it ain't what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, all right, if I'm getting all of these numbers, getting money and I'm not happy, why am I doing it? Like this ain't what I want to do. Not, so at yeah. that point I stopped. I was like, I'm gonna focus all my attention and energy to just acting. Mm -hmm. This was in December. I stopped, and it's crazy because January I booked American Vandal on Netflix and High Flying Bird on Netflix, like that same month. I was like, all right, it's something. Yeah, I, I'm. I could do I'm this. I'm wanting something. I could do that. Yeah, because mm -hmm. I always felt like I could do it, but I was I was tiptoeing. Were you I'd scared? Be doing social though? media. Were I wasn't you? scared because I just. It's the same, I feel like it was the same step when I moved out here. Mm -hmm. It was just yeah. on a different level. Like yeah. in Virginia, like it's mind crazy. you, I lived in the hood, but everybody I knew lived in the hood. My rent was $300. <laughs> I had a good job. I was making money. I had like two cars. Like yeah. I, I was living nice. Right. I, was, I was the man in college. But to move out here and pursue acting, I had to sell my car, sell everything I owned to move out here Take and a ride a bicycle. Back. Mm. So I had to take wow. a big step back. So wow. the transition from social media to acting is the That's same crazy. thing. I had to take a step back. I That's was crazy. the man on social media. Now I'm coming. I'm acting, and I'm I'm like I'm the extra. Uh, yeah. yeah. Let me let me. I want to ask you a question about making that transition, that switch. Because you said what month did you stop that? December. December. Oh, so you booked something fairly quickly. Yeah. So, so you never really had a moment to really think about well, what am I gonna do for for income for a source of income? Oh yeah, yeah, I did. So. So like, how, how, how was that? Because if you said, if you're making all your money from social media, you say, yo, I'm, I'm going to stop cold turkey because I'm about to chase my next dream, my next passion. Like that didn't make you nervous. I mean, you had, I mean, I'm, you didn't have a baby at the time, but you had a yeah. girl. No, right? I didn't. We had broke up. Okay. okay. Broke too much. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. So this is around that time. Yeah. So did they attribute to the depression? The, maybe, the, the man, breakup? Maybe, maybe. We had did a show as soon as we broke up. I had a studio, I'm just trying to produce content because I was going to do a show with her. And then I was like, we could do a show. This is a gimmick with my ex. We just broke up. We were really exes. We could do different things every week. Talk about, like first episode, we talking about my perspective and her perspective of how we met and we acting it out. Like second episode, we handcuffed together. Another one, we necking and afraid. So my mind is in creative mode. I'm just breaking up and I'm not even healing. I'm thinking, mm -hmm. how can I produce content? This is going to mm -hmm. get views. Like that's just where I was at. Um, we did the show. She said it was the worst time of her life. Wow. Um, but anyway, fast forward when I stopped, I ain't even gonna cap. Like I just went cold. To, I, I did stop, but with social media 
and Facebook, it was some residual money coming in mm -hmm. from like just the content I created. I could still, the videos I had up could still make money for me. It wasn't what I was making. It slowly trickled down. But um, saying I went from not working to working doesn't mean it wasn't like a deficit of money because sure. acting, acting money isn't good. Yeah. 90% of the time until you, when you're the man, like when you were named, your budget is higher on film, but it's still hard with film. But when you um, television, you could slowly get your rate up. Like the most money I probably made was like television or campaign or something. Mm -hmm. But movies, I just did a movie and for some reason they was holding my money back. So I got all of my money for the movie at one time. It was $10,000. For the whole movie? For no movie. way. 10 bands. 10 bands. No way. Right. How long was you working on the movie? It was a, I probably only worked 10 days over okay. two months but the thing is when you obligated to work on a film for two months you can't do nothing, nothing else, else. Right. because yeah. of, of the schedule so for these two months that money don't pay nah that's my humbling. mortgage for hey, my money humbling. you know who yeah. just said so, that that's humbling taraji p henson i just saw um an interview she said she got paid 150 bands for benjamin button wow what? Right, she said that the critically acclaimed Benjamin, Benjamin Button. Button. Right, no, she no, said she said half paid. of it, half of it taxes. Right, half of it taxes, and then she had to pay her team percentage based on the hundred and fifty, and not based on oh, after God. taxes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's which is crazy. So right, the way the, the way the math works, just just use a hundred thousand because it's easier to do the math. You get a hundred thousand dollar check for whatever it is. Right, your agent your agent's gonna take ten percent of that. That's ten thousand. Your manager gonna take ten percent of the hundred. Mm -hmm. Then your of lawyer, the hundred, not yeah, of the yeah, 90, of the hundred. The then the lawyer gonna take five percent of the hundred. That's Wait, twenty. Look, that's twenty five percent. Let me ask you a question really quickly. What is the difference between your agent and the lawyer? Because oh, because in, in the industry that that I come from, that we come from, right? Like the agent is handling the legal um, aspects. Uh, yeah, of aspects of the contract, mm -hmm. right? right? So like, what is the difference between an agent and a lawyer for you and in your in your industry? So an uh, agent is. The agents do diligence is calling around, getting you a job, setting up the audition, setting up, the, getting you hired. Pretty okay. much, a, a lawyer is a lawyer goes over your contracts. They yep. work together, but the lawyer yep. does all the, le the legalities of it, and yep. he negotiates too. They work together, but it's kind of checks and balances. Yep. Of course, yep. big agencies they have um, a bunch of people. Uh, they got a lot. They got in-house lawyers, mm -hmm. but that's what it is. No, I mean the in-house lawyers aren't going to be as good as oh, they you play for eighteen. Been. Yeah, they're not playing yeah, they, yeah, yeah. Public defender. Yeah, but for yeah, us though, okay. for, it for us, like defender. he said though, like my my agent's name back in the day was Frank Bauer under Sunwest Sports. Sunwest Sports employs a lawyer, so we never even gonna talk to the lawyer. That's true. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But like it's the same thing. Yeah, my yeah. lawyer different. It could be some things that I don't even take through my agency. I'm just like how my lawyer looked through yep. it. And so if you think about it, it's five percent. But if it's protecting you, and if he negotiates twenty yep. percent higher, you still in the cool. Then you win. So you said, so you said win. The agent yeah. so take, take how agent much? ten, manager ten, ten. lawyer five. five, right? So that's twenty five percent. And then your taxes, if you're not incorporated, it's forty percent. Ooh, you sick. Other than that, of it's thirty mm -hmm. percent. So take at the forty to the twenty five. That's sixty five percent. You only get thirty five percent of your money. Ooh, he just dropped a little nugget. So, not going there so, trying to pay Melvin Gray. That's 35000 so, not 100 Do not drop go it in there down. trying to get Melvin Gray paid. Let's said go back that. down to 10000 which I made for that movie. Mm -hmm. So that takes this 35% to $3,500 for yep. two months of work. And yep. this isn't like me just coming out the gate. This is me after everything you've seen. This is the yeah, last project I did. Yep. But I'm not saying that to be like, oh, we're not getting paid because this is just part of the craft. Yep. Because... I'm gonna get mines on the back end Absolutely. when I'm in name, and people are like, why is he getting twenty million dollars for this film? Because you don't know all of the work I had to do to get to this point. Yep. You know what I mean? So it, it all even out if you really understand the process. But I'm saying that to say when I left social media, and I was booking acting work, I wasn't making any money. Like mm -hmm. I went from like I was saying, I was getting six figures a month just off of um, CPM type shit from the um, social media mm -hmm. to the whole year. I think 2018. I probably made like fifty thousand dollars before taxes. Fifty thousand dollars in LA is nothing. So Mind you, I did, I did before um, taxes. You yeah, before, before taxes. taxes. I did American Vandal, which was a, a great show on Netflix. I did High Flying Bird, which was a a film with a, a Oscar winning director Steven Soderbergh, 
and I did um I did the way back with Ben Affleck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. All in that year, you would think like if I never worked again, it was like, oh yeah, he was an actor. He did all of these three projects, yeah, and yeah. I got less than you know what I mean what a teacher would get. Wait a minute, wait a That's minute. That's wild. For the that same year, the way back came out. We said fifty thousand in that, that same year. Yeah, yeah. You was the feature guy in that movie. I mean, wow. it's Ben Affleck's movie. I mean, it's Ben it's, Affleck's it's, movie, but you was a co-star. Yeah, yeah. Like when they did promo tours, you were there. Yeah, I was there on the promo tours. And yeah. Like it may not have been the best lucrative like thing for you, but like Gosh. you were booming from a business standpoint. This all this was happening during the quarantine, right? Nah, this is all 2018. 2018? The thing is, that film they, took a long time to come out. Okay, so by it, the time it came out, it was right before quarantine. Yep. But you don't get paid once the film come out unless you got back-end points. And you're not getting back-end points unless you're a big name, you put money in on a project, or it's an indie film. Oh, and wow. you negotiate back-end points because they don't have money to pay you out the gate. Um, Explain to us back-end points. What's back-end so points? If, say, we doing an indie film and y'all don't have money to pay what... We don't have enough money to pay what your rate is. We could promise you 1% on the back end. So if the movie goes to the theaters and do numbers, you'll get 1% of what it makes um, in the theaters. Mm. And a lot of big stars do this, like for Marvel movies, like um, the lady from Black Widow was just suing Marvel because they had negotiated her back end points. So she thinking when the movie goes to the, uh, was Scarlett Johansson? Oh, that's why it was an issue with it being on Disney Plus or some shit like that? Right, because she negotiated in her contract that she get back end points. So when it goes to the theaters, if it does a hundred million dollars in the theaters, she that's when she gonna get paid. Yeah. But when it don't go to the theaters and just go to Disney Plus, now she not gonna get paid off of and it. And that's why they held it off by putting release on Disney Plus. Yeah, so yeah. that's 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 what back points are. That's um, good to know, good to know. Okay. Oh, we there? <laughs> we there, we there, we there, we there. It's that time, y'all. What's the deal, y'all? Welcome back to the Nice and Neat Halftime Show. I'm your host, Omar, as you can see. We have an amazing guest in Melvin Gregg here in attendance. You, and um, yeah, you know, the fellas is back for another week, another episode. We want to get into the game. Them the rules. Duke, what we got, man? All right, so we're going to switch gears a little bit. I know we've been talking about your your life story and diving into like your, your journey, right? This is completely... Uh, related. All right. So when we All do right. done the rules, we give hypothetical situations and we ask you to just give us your feedback. It could be sports. It could be mm-hmm. music. It could be dating. In this case, it's dating. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Cool. So hypothetically speaking, right? <laughs> you okay. are engaged. Ooh. Yeah. All right. You seen the best man? I have. With uh, Morris Chestnut. Tay Diggs. Tay Diggs. Okay. Come cool. On, so that was an incredible cast, by the way. So, um, so in a scenario, right, where you are at the altar with your soon to be wife. Uh-huh. Right? And she tells you, or actually actually before you're at the altar, let's say that, right? Okay. Before you're at the altar, the day before. Night before. The night before. Night before. Before. Night before. Let's night do that. Before. Night, before. Night, before. night before. Night before. So night before, right? You find out that one of your homeboys, your best man in the past, used to date her. And you've never known until this night. All right? Yeah. <laughs> what <laughs> is your next move? And let your imagination run with date her. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Whatever. What's your next move? Are you are you, you know, proceeding like nothing happened? Hell are, no. It, it's proceeding like nothing happened. <laughs> so, okay, so, no, you address, so what do you address? Are you addressing her? Are you addressing him? I think I'm going to address him. Oh, no. I wish it's hard to tell this hypothetical because it's like, <laughs> bro, when you get, I'm tight when you right get mad, okay, like, let's do this. I get the type let me of help mad you out. I don't think. Mm. Okay, let me help you out though, because because it is a difference in how you respond to it, depending on how you find out. Sure. Right. True. So let's just say, let's just say, is in a book. Let's just say, <laughs> let's say you, you, you saw it, like somebody just wrote a book about it. Yeah. Yeah. And then what? Hmm, let me put myself as an actor. Let me go ahead, channel that. But I'm playing my soul too. Right? Yeah. <laughs> let's just let's just let's just reiterate the key nah, points. I might just did. I know. The... Keep in mind, you spent over fifty bands for this wedding. Fifty? Nah. Oh, Melvin. Melvin? No. Oh, Melvin? Melvin. Melvin's cheap. Melvin's driving. <laughs> Melvin been driving the same car for six years. <laughs> I'm driving my Vine vehicle. Okay. Um, nah. <laughs> I'm driving my Vine vehicle. <laughs> Nigga, I'm cheap. Um, nah, I, I feel like part of me would say, I need his fade. I ain't even talking to her. She just got to go. She but the only reason go. I would need his fade is because he's my friend mm. and he betrayed me. If it's a random guy, 
that guy owes me no loyalty. Yeah. But in the same Them the time, rules right there. Them straight yeah, up. Like, straight you know, up. He owes me nothing. Yeah. It's not up to him to uphold my marriage. You know what I mean? It's, it's on her. Yeah. But even then, too, I think I would just probably just leave. Mm. I I just that'll leave. be the end of it? It'll be over. No need for conversation. I'm out. Wow. It's a hard no. I'm out. Because I'm not even going to put myself in a situation where shit get physical because now I'm looking at lawsuits. I'm never no. going to touch We're her. not losing yeah, the bag. Yeah. But that's what yeah, we're not, that's what like, we not doing. Mm -mm. Yeah. Cool. I'm glad I found this out now versus after we didn't get married and then we got to go to court yep. and decide where my money goes. And now she's taking yep. you half. Yeah, yeah. So I just be like, cool. I remember when I was 14, my cousin told me, su super simple, you can't stop a woman from doing what she want to do. Mm -hmm. Like, that's it. Like, no matter what you do to try to prevent, go through phone, you can't stop her from doing what she want to do. Mm -hmm. So if that's what, who she is, I'm glad I found out beforehand. Mm -hmm. I Your mean, cousin told you that at 14? Huh? Your cousin told you that at 14? Yeah, bro. But yo, but yo, yo, but yo yeah. he was older, though. He was Kick older. Kicking gang. He like but yo, now. but in, in this case, it's a little different, don't you think, though? Hypothetically speaking, because it happened in the past, right? So are you kind of saying that, like, if it happened in the past, it happened before happen we again? was together? Or were we together? It happened before y'all was together. But just actually, like the best man. But yeah. that's your best man. Nah, and they was together, tell you. right? Oh, they, no, messed, no, no, they messed around. They messed around, but you didn't know. Nah, I still out. Mm -hmm. trust, trust out. Is, trust is everything yep. for me. You know what I mean, I'm not going through your phone. I'm not doing none of that because yep. I trust you. You betray that trust. Now I gotta, you know what I mean, do all of this, turn into a private investigator to make sure you ain't betray. I ain't got time for all that, man. Hey, let's hey. just, let, just it go a, both ways though. Yeah, it's a, yeah. It's another hypothetical though. Like if she told you long before the wedding. Yeah. And you had already been dating her. And she she had sex with my best friend? Mm -hmm. Sure. Nah. Because mm -hmm. if she tell me too early on, it's going to be done at that point. For I, sure, I, for not sure. too early, though. Not too early, though. This is like... Either way, I'm out. You can, yeah. <laughs> Give me the rules? Give me the rules? Yeah. Yeah, like how I'm going to get in an argument with my boy the whole time. Like, <laughs> now, my, now, right, now, now my boy can't come always got one. Yeah, all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hey, I can't nigga think... 21, shout out 2K. All right, cool. <laughs> yeah, all right, cool. All right, cool. <laughs> and then your other homies know it too, so they just... <laughs> they, for nah, sure they bro. I, I, no, they Mel know. Melvin, I know you not know. talking. They, uh, <laughs> 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 and then they all start laughing. Yeah. Yeah. You need a whole other friend. The joke is on you yeah. all the time. You, you just need friend new group. friends. Oh, that's for right. one woman, yeah. you got to get a whole friend you gotta group. You got to get a whole new friend group. And then with her, is. Some nah, may argue too many women. Some, out some, here. some may argue that's pride and ego. What you say to that? Maybe it is. <laughs> and, and that's fine. Some, 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 some may argue. Some may argue that's insecurity. Nah, right? that ain't no insecurity. Some may say. Some may say, "Hey, yo, like that happened in the past." That's I'm I'm glad you said that. So you know you know what I say insecure. that you never. Nah, I don't think you're insecure because if you would have got the the if you would have known that up front, you would have never dated the person. I would have never did it straight and up. You would have never dated and the person. This is just me. I ain't even saying what's right and wrong because. I mean, I'm sure there's people who, who's who been in this situation and they're mature enough to, you know what I mean, move, move past, past it. it and that, that's them. That's them. Like, everybody's different. With mm -hmm. me, that's just, I, my boy? If it's a dude I know, all right, cool. I might could, but my, my you boy? You would consider it. Yeah. You would consider it, yeah. Man. I'd be pissed that neither one of them told me. Yeah. yeah. You both see where this out. was going? I'm, both y'all yeah. out. I'm observing that character part. now. Now one of y'all told me? Yeah. Both y'all out. I lost a fiance and a best and friend. And a best friend. Right. I'm really hurt. Right, yeah. it's better for me because neither one of y'all was for me. That's real. Y'all yeah. should be together. Yeah, y'all should, should be together. Y'all should be together. Okay, okay. Dim the rules. <laughs> uh, and with that said, y'all, we are gonna conclude this week's halftime show. We are gonna get to the rest of the show the only way we know how. That's with some positive energy, some positive vibrations, and a smile. Of course, man. Let's get into the second half. Let's go, Let's man. Go. That was that was. That was a, that was a good halftime. Yeah, I that enjoyed was a good that. Halftime. I don't I think it was a good hypothetical. Yeah, that was, uh, was it a good hypothetical? It was hypothetical. You need some positivity after that. <laughs> what if? You know what? I'm glad you said that. Yo, let's, 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 Yo. let's get straight into some positivity, man. You know, um, something that I've definitely chronicled and I've watched and I've seen you do that. I've actually been really impressed with because this generation of men just don't quite do this. You recently purchased a home. Right. Shout out to that. Shout out to that. Being Thank a black you, homeowner, man. man. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you know, bro. In, in, in LA, you recently yeah, purchased yeah, a home. Yeah. That's that's a different level right there. I know that you up over 30% right now, but we ain't even going to talk about that. <laughs> but, man, you went oh, through 30% is going to be consistent. It's just oh, how big your sure. 30 is. <laughs> <laughs> you you yeah. recently. Next episode, we talk tax breaks. 
See, how to get that he, 30 higher. That the fact part, that you understand real. that. Yeah. You know, we might have to bring Melvin on again. <laughs> Hey, I'm open to it. I'm so it. you recently did an entire landscaping job of your crib. Like yeah. you went from, I seen it was gravel. You threw in grass. You got basketball court. Like you did all of that. And when I say you did a landscaping job, it's not like you just said you was making phone calls. I seen you out there putting up fences. I seen you doing that. Right. And then I also see, and I'm going to tie this in. Your relationship with your pops is a real strong relationship. Like you guys, he's been in a lot of your vines. I've seen him in uh in in some of our mutual friends' vines as well. Yeah. So, do you feel like when it comes to just like your handyman work, your duty around the house that came from pops, or that was something that you picked up on your own? Definitely didn't come from pops. Um, <laughs> Damn, nah, <laughs> for that he know it. He know it. He know um, it. Yeah, he know it. I never had a yard like this. This. This house, my first time ever having a yard. I've never lived in a house. Mm, I've wow. lived in apartments my whole life. So, of course, I ain't picked that up from there. Um, but how I got into like doing landscaping and, and, and carpentry type stuff, like I said, when I had a, I had a production studio, and I, it was just pretty much a warehouse. It was like mm -hmm. a big warehouse, no offices, no nothing. And it would have cost more money. I told you I was cheap. It would have cost mm -hmm. money to get it built and <laughs> not I mean, got to deal with all these coals and stuff. Yeah, it's still cheap. And um thrifty, efficient. Frugal. Yeah, frugal. Frugal. So That's the word. I had a I had a guy who did my sound too, but he like he knows a lot about like he's a pilot now. He just learned how to fly like those, jump off a mountain and just this guy's What's that, he's, hang like, gliding? That he's like Forrest Gump, but without like the learning deficiency. Just, like yeah. Yep. yeah. Um, I don't even know if I use that term right. Anyway, um, he knew a lot about building. So he kind of gave me the fundamentals because we build offices. Yep. I documented it all and never even posted it, man. I, I got it somewhere in the house. But I built I built offices. Mm -hmm. I built a wardrobe office. I built my office. Had to put AC unit in, lay the carpet, do wow. drywall, paint it. I had to build the sets. So when we did shows, I would build the flats out. And then I figured out a way to build flats and put wheels on them so I could just spin them around. Wow. So I ain't got to tear them down. And um, just the the set design, everything, right? I figured out how to do it myself. So I'm not dependent on nobody to create content. Mm. And I kind of learned the fundamentals, fundamentals to building. And it's like, it's not that hard. We just it's never do it. Right? It's, it's, it's you time consuming. It. You gotta learn how to do it. But once you learn it, it's building blocks. It's like Legos. Yep. And one of the great things I like about it is it's very, therapeutic. very therapeutic. Lord. You're not on your phone. Yep. You're not thinking about nothing else. You're just thinking about the task in front of you one step at a time. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's dope because it kind of parallels to just life. Yep. You gotta to make a strong foundation one step at a time. You can't skip no yep. steps. Mm -hmm. yeah. Everything has to be solid, especially the base. For sure. And then from there, you could just kind of build and expand. And just the time it takes to do that is, I said therapeutic. I just did a um, a theater room. Like people, I was like, oh, I'm in my theater. People, oh my God, you got a theater room. It was just a room. Yeah. I went and bought a lot of wood, built risers, looked on YouTube, figured out how to run electric, mm -hmm. ran electrical wow. in it, got wow. the car put wow. in, YouTube figured University. out how to do it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I we went definitely there. gotta bring you back. Oh, yeah, yeah, I did a, I built a baffle wall. I didn't even know what a baffle wall was. It's a fake wall, so with um, sonically transparent uh, fabric over it, so you put speakers behind it and everything's behind the screen. I went to Home Depot, I seen they, not Home Depot, I went to Best Buy, I seen they had one. I was like, what's this? And the guy was telling me it was a baffle wall so we could hide all of the stuff. I just had my phone start taking pictures of I mean, where was that? And then I could look at the pictures and I'm like, okay, this is how they built this. This is how they did it. Mm -hmm. And just, I mean, do it myself. Yo, you, you mentioned something that I wanted to touch on because you said it's in the first half and then right now it's reminding me again. You said the word therapeutic, right? Yeah. You seem to be a man who is of, you're very balanced. You seem to be very balanced and at peace. At any time, because we've talked about it before on the show, at any time have, have you taking that that leap of faith to like enter therapy you seem like someone who may have had therapy before is there something that you do with your girl or your excuse me your fiance like what's what's that aspect of your mental health like um i've, I've never gone to therapy um i feel like i got friends who do therapy and they love it everybody i talk to i've never heard anybody say negative about right. neg anything negative about it but for myself i'm very conscious mm very conscious of everything i mean um it's a quote the greatest sin is to be unconscious it's like you don't want to be delusional you don't want to be me thinking i can go to the nba 
and I'm trash. Like, <laughs> right. like I'm out here wasting my time and this isn't for me. Like, you know what I mean? You gotta be conscious in, in all aspects of life. So I'm very, uh, I look myself in the mirror. I see what I need to work on. I got affirmations. I say every morning that remind me of what I wanna become um, based on what I am now and what I could be better at. Yeah. And as far as like um, therapy, the sense of what therapy is, I'm very open. Uh -huh. Like, man, it's, it's nothing I shy away from in conversation because I know, I mean, me hiding and not talking about it is not dealing with it. And if it's not affecting me, it shouldn't matter. You know what I mean? And even looking at stuff that might affect me, like I realize a lot of things, I mean, that translate into your relationship, yeah. stem back from childhood type stuff. Like I had yeah. problems being um, affectionate. It's just, I mm -hmm. never grew up around affectionate. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm overprotective. Mm -hmm. Just cause a lot of stuff happened to my mom when I was little that I witnessed. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to say none of it was from my dad cause that could be misconstrued. Right. But some like crazy stuff happened to my mom when I was younger. So I was really overprotective of her and my sister. So that translates to, you know, my girl yeah. and my son. So sometimes I'm overbearing. I don't want y'all to go here. Like, you know what I mean? So yeah. it's like, I'm, I'm conscious. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like, um, although it's it's not therapy, but you have therapeutic practices. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I think that's kind of like the compensation. Yeah, it's, like, yeah. It, it, it's a different form of therapy. Mm -hmm. I call it, I like, yeah. it's like, instead, you, you're proactive rather than reactive. Yeah. You know, yeah. you take care of things, you know, just in advance rather than something happens and then you try to deal with it on the back end. Right. One of the greatest things people could do, man, is journal. Yeah. Mm. Like, not necessarily talk about everything you did that day, but how you feel, yeah, how things affect you, what you want to do, like all of that stuff. A lot of times you got the answers, mm -hmm. but in everyday life you ain't got time to really process your thoughts. Yeah. You think so fast, you talk so fast, but when you write in, you got to go every letter of every word, of every sentence, of every paragraph, so mm -hmm. you really got time to think stuff through. And that's, that's, that's therapeutic too. Yeah, so I, I want to ask, man, How's it? How's it working with uh, Damson? Damson. Yeah. So how how is that dynamic? Let's get into that. That's yeah. Good. Like That's a good question. Yeah. Damson is. He got snubbed, by the way. He gets snubbed every year. Damson is. Everything is by design with him. It's like a chess player, nonstop. Um, he's a technician. He's probably one of the most technical actors I've worked with. And I just came off a, a project with movie stars. What does that what mean, though? Te technical actor, what does that mean? He's conscious of everything. If he, it has to be perfect or? Nah, he just know nothing is on a whim. Mm -hmm. He's not winging it. Would mm -hmm. you say that that is partly because he's a British guy playing American roles? It's just it's just who he is. Like, if you, if you watch his interviews, you're like, oh, he's this posh British guy. He's so, like, refined and... <laughs> Dams is from the hood. He's yeah. from Peckham. Like yep. he's 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 from the hood. Like he's close to Frank he's closer to Franklin Saint than anybody would know. Mm. He's not a kingpin, but he's from that. Yep. Um mm. but when I say technical, it's like his looks. Like if he stop and look over his shoulder, mm -hmm. he'll sit there for three or four seconds, the camera sit on him, he wait till the camera pushes in before he does something else. His placement when he stands, mm. he'll make sure because he's, he's the actress. boss, he'll take a step in front of you or a step higher. Mm. He'll put his hand on your shoulder. The details. It's, detail. it's, it's small details. Yeah. Like when he walked through a room, he'll like just brush the wall or, you know what I mean? Like mm. just things to show that he's thinking of. He's very technical and his stillness is, is like amazing. One, wow. one, one of the most important things with acting is stillness. Mm. Um, if I'm sitting here, you're watching me, I'm slow. I don't really move. You paying that attention, you're paying close attention. And then whatever I do, even if I jump up, it's gonna it's gonna shock you more than if I'm big the whole time. Mm -hmm. Like he he plays that and it works well with his character. Um it's a transfer of energy. Yeah, that's... yeah. He's he's very technical and mm -hmm. he understands it all. And I wouldn't say it's necessarily because he's British. I feel like it'd be the same if, you know, he was American because he put so much into acting. Everything is for him to become this Denzel, mm -hmm. how he walk around, who he walk around with, what he's wearing, where he goes, everything is calculated in his mind and become who he want to be. Everything is in, everything is intentional. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Um, but our dynamic on set was, it was it was interesting, especially season four. Um, not nah, yeah, season four. So season three, when my character came in, I wanted something from them. Um, I needed to get close to him. I needed him to trust me. 
I needed to create create a divide between him and um, Isaiah John's character, Leon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I needed a divide, so I come in and I like cozy up to him, be helpful with him, but also like create this tension between them and son them. I never paid attention to nobody else in the room when I would do a scene other than Damson and Louis. Mm-hmm. Paying attention to Louis, she's the brains behind the operation, but it's also gonna get uh, Amon's character, Uncle Jerome, off, off beat. And then the same thing with not paying Lil' Leon any attention, call him Lil' Leon, that wasn't scripted. Yeah. I just know, cause I was oh, a fan of the show, yeah. uh-huh. and season two, somebody had called him Lil' Leon and he ain't like it. And being that my character, they went to high school together, fly. middle school, it makes sense. I started calling yeah. him Lil' Leon, and it's even, it's like, that's the chemistry nice. of yeah. character. Nice. 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 Yeah. Because I would do things and they gonna naturally respond cause all of these are masterful actors. So it's like everybody, the cohesion is, is great. But then season four came around and at this point, I had enough of trying to be nice and trying to, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? I, man boy had a bitch moment. Episode nine, I think. He went to him, he was like, yo, he's still in my corners. We need to re- renegotiate. Yep. I brung it to you first. My boy came to me and was like, yo, he beat me up. What are we gonna do? And I'm like, nah, let me talk to him first. Yep. I go, yep. I bring it to him. Yep. I tell him what's going on, I try to renegotiate, I'm trying to be nice, bite my tongue, and he basically spit in my face. Yep. The price is this, what it is. Take it or leave it. This family, nothing happened to him. What you gonna do? So at that point, all right, the gloves off. So the next time you see man, boy, he's shooting up the hood. <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. So that's where he's at when he come out seconds this next season. Now it's like, fuck you, nigga. I could do what you're doing better than you. Mm-hmm. What you gonna do about it? You ain't got a you ain't got an army. I just need a plug from you. So I'm here smiling at you. I need the plug. So it's different energy. So when we come into this season with knowing how Damson is and me understanding, I'm a ticklist too. I'm a, we both Virgos. So we plan power battles just throughout, like on camera, off camera. It's not power battles, but it's we both conscious of what it is and how to transfer it's on It's like screen. that, that, that the character is kind of like transferring on to it, like it, the it, actors. Yeah. It's like, yo, we, we really yeah. doing this. Yeah. yeah. Cause we embodying it. I love those little small nuances yeah, that like, like the average person may not catch or hear by yeah. just looking it at the screen. Stuff you don't even realize yeah. like it's, it's one scene, it's one scene episode five-ish I think where I come to the club and I tell them my niece just got shot. Mm. So I had just came from Australia. Um, I helped our production for four four months because I was in Australia filming. I come back, we doing a little talk. He say some little slick stuff. They laughing, but it's like this is this is our this is our chemistry because that's what our characters are. It's cool. I'm not saying that to nobody because I know how it's gonna play into the scene. Mm-hmm. When I come to do the scene, he steps up on the stage, <laughs> and it's like nobody else will pay attention. All right, he's on the stage. It's placement. But it's more than placement, because now when the cameras shoot, they looking up at him and they looking down at me. Yep. It's a power move. Yeah. Yep. And he understand all of those dynamics. That's nice. And I learned it from him from doing the season before, just seeing him when he pat me on the shoulder, stuff like that. So when this season, I picked up from yeah, him. That's, that's dope. So when the scene start, I'm, st- I'm sitting down there for a minute, but when I step up, step up and be like, it's your boy, Leon, and step up on the stage over top of him, mm. and then dismiss him, walk to the side of him and start talking to everybody else. And then come back, talk to him over my shoulder. It's all power plays mm-hmm. from just movement. Wow. The other scene, we talking and I'm like, uh, you good? Everything shaky? He like, good. Pat him on his shoulder as I'm walking off. All of these is like sunny. But it's things that I learned from him in season three, but now the dynamic of the characters are shifting. So now I can apply it. And him understanding that too, he'll let me do it because his character is in a vulnerable place. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he already know at the end he gonna win. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So then when he win, it's just that more electrifying because he felt passive the whole time and then pop, pop. Nigga always talk too much. <sighs> yeah. And he look over his shoulder and he just sit there for three seconds. Then he turned to the girl. It's like everything is technical. Mm. I, you know I, you know what I love most about that story you just told, bro? Yeah, yeah, that was hard. hard. That's that was hard. hard. That was hard. That was hard. The most I love about that story, bro, and I want to ask, ask this question because it sounds like now as you're reflecting on it, it sounds like you, you noticed the growth, not only in Man Boy, but in Melvin Gregg like throughout the entire thing, right? Were you able to see that at that moment? You know, because as you're sitting here talking, it's, it's hindsight now, right? Yeah. You're looking back, you can notice those little things that he, that Damson, right? Mm-hmm. That Damson was doing, right? Did you feel that evolution of growth in yourself in those in that moment, or is that something that you kind of only could see now that you're removed nah, from the situation? I, like, like even back to social media, I'm always 
I'm technical too. I pay attention to everything. I'm a reverse engineer. I see what works and I learn it. Like I learn comedy from watching King Batch and Lele Pons and they storm watching their videos that pop. I'm like, okay, what can I implement to make it different? But mm -hmm. just taking from what works for them, getting mm -hmm. rid of things that didn't work. So it's the same thing with acting. But I definitely felt growth and it just comes from being comfortable too. Like my first scene on Snowfall, my ears popped. I couldn't hear none of the scene. Mm -hmm. And it was just because it was, it was nervous energy, but I was mm -hmm. so prepared that it, it worked out, mm -hmm. but it still, it could work in the scene because the character could have been nervous, so it could work. Mm -hmm. um, but I know deep down, which doesn't matter how I feel, like as an actor, it doesn't matter how you feel, it's how you right. make people feel. Right. But I didn't feel as confident and comfortable as I would want to, but throughout the process and throughout the seasons, I'm learning, I'm paying attention, I'm picking up, I'm seeing things that he do. I was a Damson Idris fan before the show. Mm. Yep. Um, I hit him up in season one and was like, bro, you a beast. He was like, appreciate it, man. I ran into him in London and it was all love mm -hmm. from a fan perspective. And he was a fan of the social media because he used to do that in London. Yep. And then I just happened to be on the show. So it was always love, but I was always studying. Idols watching become his, rivals. Watching his, um, <laughs> yeah, watching the interviews, mm -hmm. all of that. Um, but I definitely felt different coming into season four than I did in season three, especially the second half. We shot the last six episodes in a week. Last five, I shot the last five episodes in a week because I was gone. They shot everything else except for my stuff. So I came back and shot five. You shot episodes five in episodes week. in a week. Yeah. Typically, correct me if I'm wrong. It takes about a week to do one episode. One or two weeks if it's an hour show, but it's just my stuff. Wow. So now okay. I ain't gotta wait around. It's just my stuff. But I had came back from doing season one, watching myself, seeing things I could correct and learning through the process, and then working in Australia with. You know what I mean? Huge actors. You know, I'm working with Regina Hall and, mm. and Michael Shannon. This for the, the, Kim, uh, the Perfect Stranger? Yeah. So I'm learning I'm there. Not, so no. I got a different, when I come back, I got a different energy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I I'm not here. A, yeah, huh? It's like, I, like, you feel like you belong here, right? Type yeah. Of and like, it's like, even within the, I found a parallels when I first came into season four, that was like season three, I was kind of new. The character ain't really know what was going on. By the time season four came, he knew where he was at. He mm -hmm. was he was more of a man. And I felt like that's where I kind of was too. So I just brought that same energy on the set. It's not, I ain't new here. Y'all know what I'm doing. Y'all mm -hmm. know what I do. Like, it's, it's just different. And that was the same energy man boy has. So when you see the face offs, it just kind of bleed through. I ain't so, the little homie no more. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, I mean, Snowfall, I will say, is, man, it's an incredibly captivating show. Um, not just for our generation, but like my pops. You know, being from California and then watching the 1980s, knowing who these characters are that they talking yeah. about. And he's just like, nah, like that's how it really happened. Pop's telling me to watch episodes. Oh, that's right. Tight. So I know we talked about Damson getting snubbed and that's just like how we feel. But how do you feel like the Academy recognizes the show if they do at all? They don't. There's no way they recognize it because it hasn't even been nominated. Mm. But I mean, the people who make the show for appreciate it. I mean, mm -hmm. the people that... Our fans of the show love it. You yeah. don't watch the show and not love it. Yeah. So I mean, nah, we can't really that. ask for much more. The Academy, I, I'm not going to, I like nominations and stuff won't be great because that's what make your price go up. Right. You win an Oscar, your price is different. You win an Emmy, your price is different. You nominate and then the show get more money and the show's going to get, you know what I mean? So the business side of it, it makes sense to get awards, but for the consumers, the fans, it's doing what it's supposed it. to do. Just yeah, average yep. consumer, you can't ask them three movies that was nominated for an Oscar last year. Word. You can't tell them, you can't ask them what was nominated, what won? Y'all mm -hmm. know what movie won Oscar no. last year? No. Exactly, nobody care. Except for the Academy within the industry because that's where the money's going to come from. But to the world, it don't matter. Yeah, yeah. nobody care. I was talking to my cousins, I mentioned Moonlight. It was like, what? Was like, y'all never heard of Moonlight? That was like a groundbreaking film. Yeah. You know? What's a Moonlight? Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's a What's Moonlight? moonlight? <laughs> yeah, niggas, what? Right, right. Go outside. Yo, so, um, so what? What I want to know is, what was your first "oh shit, this is really happening" moment? Right? What's the moment you were like, "Oh wow, my life is about to really change." Um, I get feelings when things are gonna shift. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to describe it. Intuition. Yeah, but before I moved to LA, I got a feeling like it's all about to change. Mm -hmm. And I moved to LA. Nothing changed for a while. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a shift. You know what I mean? Yep. Things, yep. you get bored and things shift. And I had another one. I was at LaJordan one day and I was like, shit, about to change. It's about the club. To shift. Yeah. Yeah, for our listeners, that's shift. a club in LA. Shift. And I had that feeling recently too. But 
Um, as far as a moment where I really was just happy enjoying the moment. Might have been last night. Mm. Mm. Might have been last night. That's crazy. Watching whole perform. Wow. Yeah, I was looking at I was looking at your page, man. Like I was going through the carousel that you posted, and I'm like, man, this looks like a good place for him to be in, man. Wow. Like, oh, it's I the never, right the right people are in the building, fam. You get to brush shoulders, shake hands with the right yeah, folks, bro. R- people run us respect you, know you. Let's t- yeah. yeah. Go talk yeah. about that, bro. Yeah, run yeah. us through that. Like I've had moments. I've, I I work with Will Smith, but I was like his standing, and I was an extra. So even though. I'm working with like my hero. I'm not doing what I want to do. Yeah. I worked with and directed The Rock, and but it's a sketch. Mm-hmm. I did the same thing with Kevin Hart, but it's a sketch. I want to do movies. Mm-hmm. Um, and then last night going to this premiere, it was a movie I was excited to see. I was genuinely excited. I don't like think, doing things for ulterior motives. I don't like going out just to be seen. I don't like going out because of how it's going to look. I really wanted to see this movie. Mm-hmm. I thought it was a screener. I didn't even think it was a premiere. I thought it was a screener. That's why I didn't invite my girl. Because mm-hmm. I was like, oh, it's just a screener. You got to have vaccination card and all this stuff. I show up. I'm like, oh, this is really a red carpet event. All right. I show there's only like 200 people there. Realized I was early. <laughs> Ended up being like 3,000 people there. So it was, um, <laughs> wow. it, it, it was something I didn't expect. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? So the movie was great. So I was already in just a great energy from watching a great film, great performances, great writing, directing, scoring. Everything was great, right? Then we go to the after party. I got friends there. So I'm kicking it. I'm chilling. I'm not awkwardly standing around. People coming up to me, showing me just like love, like genuine love for stuff. Um, and it just felt good. Like, Hell recognition. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. my I got a, And it's just not just me. My All my friends around me are in the same position. That's there. One of my boys, like, he sleep with my full time. You remember when I said I had four roommates? With yep. He was one of them. Mm. And now he's a working actor. We both here together. That's lit. He brushing shoulders, talking to everybody. Me too, introducing, like, it just it felt good. And then seeing Hove perform, and he in arm distance. Like, I grew, different. everybody grew up on Jay-Z, man. Come on. It's different. Like, yeah. everything he stand for. I mean, from Marcy to Madison Square. Like, yep. Yep. Mm. you don't have just, to go through that. Man. Hov did that. Come on. <laughs> Bro, he did it. He did it all. Like, yeah. and he was just right. He was there as part of a project, which is in something I do. And I know Hov a Snowfall fan, but I, I couldn't must up the courage to go say <laughs> nothing to him. I just want to remain a fan. Oh, man. you didn't say Wait, that. Let's talk about that. Let's you didn't talk say about, that? Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about nah, that. Nah, I have other opportunities and better opportunities. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, I feel like this isn't right. You know what I mean? I Time wish of, I wasn't this it, way. It didn't feel organic. Yeah, I don't. I feel like people are gonna come up to him all the time, and it yeah. could just be like, "Hey, how you?" Even though I, I know feel they're that a snowfall, yeah. but it just didn't feel organic. It yeah. was mm-hmm. I wouldn't want him to picture anything, but what right. would the shaking his hand do just to say I met Hove? That's right. self serving. I would rather it be, you know, what I mean, something where we mutually beneficial. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. I like I went up and said what's up to Nas because me and Nas Nas um, produced a soundtrack for a film I did 2016. So we was all at Sundance together. Um, we got mutual friends. We would be in his studio together getting watching movies get scored type so i had a, a rapport nice. with nas so mm-hmm. i was able to hey what's up um i don't have that with jay-z yet mm-hmm. and me saying what's up then when it created it this yeah. is me justifying it myself because i didn't say nothing yeah, yeah, yeah. but i said something to jonathan majors who's one of my favorite actors right now um that's your he, space he's the lead of it and but i still didn't know um what i love about jonathan majors he's so much about the craft He's not on social media at all. If you want to see him, you gotta see him on the film, see him um, in his work or watch interviews. And his interviews are amazing. Like he could talk acting all day with the best of them. Um, and he, he was amazing in the film. And I just went up, I, I went up to him. And I'm like, amazing job, man. Excuse me, um, I'm a fan. Oh, thank you, man. I appreciate it. And that's it. I don't know what else to say to yeah, you. Yeah. Like what am I? Anything else I'm saying is forcing it. Mm, I try yeah. to stop. You know what? I'm but it's fan, okay bro. though, because when people do that to you, it's just like, yo, this the acknowledgement feels good. Yeah. Right. So even if people come up to me or you and say or us and say, hey man, I watch your podcast. I'm a big fan. Nothing's gonna come from it most of the time. Yeah. But it does feel good to for someone to acknowledge the craft that you put in, right? Yeah. So just imagine, like, I know you hear it all the time, but I would imagine that it never gets old. Yeah, this, I think it helps reinforce purpose. Yeah, it never it, gets old. It, it doesn't, and this isn't like politically correct, isn't the right thing to say, Yeah, but it's, it's 
what I observe, right? Yeah. So like I said before, I'm conscious. If I'm out, say 15 people come up and tell me they love what I do, right? Mm -hmm. Out of that 15, at least 12 of them gonna blend together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. That's the reality. I can't so basically, that's you, the reality. You so don't want to just at, be a blink. I'm, I'm looking mm -hmm. at if I go in, I'm a blink. Yep. yep. The ones that stand out are the people that stand out to you. Even though these people, I'm, they might know me, they might not. I'm not going to assume anybody know me. Um, even though they might, I just, but I just rather just it be more know. significant. I'm, I need to get better, man. Because sometimes you look back like, oh, I wish I would have went and did this, did that. Mm -hmm. But I also feel like. If I continue to do what I'm doing, I have other opportunities um, yep. to work with these people and meet these people when it's a better time to make a first impression. Uh, yeah. But yeah, that's just me and I'm introverted too. So Word. Yeah, so who, of, who's, who's um, two two questions. Your dream role, what's your dream role? And who's the one actor, actress that you want to work with? My dream role... It's going to shift and it's going to change. It's probably something different in each genre. After watching Harder They Fall last night, I want to do a Western. Um, <laughs> really? I like playing gangsters, but I don't want to have to keep being a gang member. Like, the Western is perfect. I can be part of a, yeah. a bank robbery game. Right. And I yeah, just yeah. don't look like... When you're a young black man playing a gangster, they don't think you acting. They just think we all gangsters a lot yeah. of the time. So it's like... Yeah. I ain't even really being appreciated for this work I'm putting in. But mm -hmm. let me go somewhere in the period and you're going to really respect it. <laughs> yeah. If yeah. I'm in the 20s or... You know what I mean? Um... But yeah, Western is, is super exciting. But I want to do, I want to do the Rick James biopic. Mm. I'm you assuming you want to be Rick James. Yeah. All right, we putting Woo! it out there. Now. Rick James biopic. Put it in the universe. I feel like wow. that's crazy. LeBron splash. His Spring, Spring Hill. 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 Come let's on, go. Spring Hill. Let's Bro, go. His his story is so crazy. It's so many ups and downs. I can't sing though. We have to figure that out. But I'm working on a script right now that. I'm not gonna say it parallels what that story would be, but I'm playing a performer in something. Um, so it'd be me kind of playing in that space I wanna go in. Maybe I'll learn from doing this project myself. So mm -hmm. if I do get the opportunity to do the Rick is, James, I can completely murder it. Is this a project you're gonna produce yourself? Not the Rick James, but the other no, one. No, I'm talking I'm about doing. the other one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So. I've been working, I I developed it a while ago. It's something I, I um, it was birthed from a, a social media, uh, character I was doing and I just completely grounded the story in no way people would even expect but I think it's a good story um I'm working on the script I should be expecting a, a draft like any day now um one of my other writers he, he's been sick but we we both we co-writing mm -hmm. um so yeah yeah I'm working on a few projects man you got to get it done yourself if you want it done yeah and what about um the actor like actress, the actor actors? uh that's tough bro um like I said, that's gonna always shift too. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. It depends the role too. Yeah. I, 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 Would you say a Will Smith or The Rock? Or depends Kevin what it Hart? is, man. I worked with The Rock and Kevin Hart. It was tight. Uh, I worked with Will too, even though I was an extra. But it depends what the role yeah. is. Now I mean, because the thing is too, like a lot of these people. Like if I do a movie with Will, it's such an age guy. I'm gonna be playing yeah. like his son or something. Like I don't know how entertaining that's gonna be. Yeah. Like we ain't gonna really have those moments. Like what we gonna do? Like uh, uh, pursuit of happiness right, two right, years later. Right, or, right, right. Yeah. So I, I would wanna maybe one of my peers, even though I could learn from the old people. I'm just thinking the character dynamics I wanna mm -hmm. do. I don't know. I do want to work with Jonathan Majors, the actor I was just talking mm -hmm. about. Yep. I think he's a beast and I can learn a lot from him. But there's so many people, man. What about like, a Michael B. Jordan? How do you feel? I was just him? thinking that. Yeah, I would I would love to work with Mike too. Um we've been talking about it for a while. It's okay. just gotta make sense. My star power my star power gotta get big enough with a studio. You and know, that's a real thing. Me. That's yeah. a real thing you recognize too it, yeah. within this industry. Oh no, bro. Okay. We definitely gotta get some in, but I gotta do my part. I gotta part. get there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep, yeah. Yeah, yep. I'm 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 real close friends with Stephen Cable Jr., the director. He did mm -hmm. the land, the movie I was talking about with Nas. Then he went on, did Creed 2, now he's doing Transformers. Okay. And of course I wanna work with him, but I gotta make sure I'm in a position where the studio approved me. Yeah. Right. Real shit. People like I want him, they be like, 
we don't care. We're spending two hundred million dollars. We want him. Yep. You right. know what I mean? So yep. that's you you gotta do your part. You, right, right. Nah, no, nah, that's real. Nah, cool. Nah, now I know, I know, I know we 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 run it short on time. It, it's it feels like it's all good. It this, feels, this, man, conversation this, like this, this conversation nah, been great. This conversation been great. But you know what I, I what I do want to say is because you know we're really big on giving people their flowers here on this show, man. And I and I've told you many times off camera, man. man. No, nah, it's all good, man. Nah, <laughs> yeah. I, I truly admire you, bro, and right, inspired you, by man. your story, man. Um, I think I think what you said today on the show, man, a lot of people could take a lot of value from it, fam. Sure. And um, you know, I think it's gonna be helpful for a lot of people, bro. So again, man, I'm so happy you're here, bro. Again, you, inspired man. by you. I admire you, you fam, especially with me want to make the transition into acting as well, man. So I love your story, bro. And I'm happy you blessed oh. nice and neat. Thank the you podcast, so much, man. With, I'm, with a, the I'm happy to be here too. And, and you know what I mean, I love everything you guys have been doing from just just what you represent too. Outside of you know fitness and wellness and health, it's like how y'all carry yourself. You know what I mean. You, you mm -hmm. men, you men within relationships, and yeah. you put that on the forefront. And even when y'all got suits on and stuff, I'm like, damn man, I, I need to get my wardrobe up. Like <laughs> these that. real men over here, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like an old little boy, man, nice and man, man boy, I'm a man, man boy. boy. Yeah. I feel like yeah, man boy. Yeah. Yeah. Nah. These men, men over here. Oh, <laughs> nah, nah. So I, I'm just saying that. So I, you know what I mean? I, I appreciate y'all and what y'all represent as well. Yeah, it's mutual. Thank you for having me. No doubt, bro. Definitely. No doubt. Definitely, bro. Um, yeah, man, I know you gave a shitload of game, man. And, and like you said, man, we appreciate you. But like in 20 seconds, man, for any aspiring actors, any young aspiring actors that look up to you, that are looking at, looking for some advice, what's like the one piece of advice um, that you could give aspiring actors. Don't do it. Mm. <laughs> no, that's real. That's real. Don't do it. And if me telling you not to do it is going to discourage you from doing it, it ain't for you. And you Ooh. ain't going to make it. You're going to waste your time. Mm. Um, so I'm going to say don't do it. But if if it's something you continue to pursue, you just got to trust the process. Um, high confidence in yourself that you're enough. You ain't got to try to be somebody else. Um, stay true to you. Be original. Um, just stay the course, man. Overnight in Hollywood is 10 years. Like I said, I started acting in 2008. Hello. It's how many years later? <laughs> 13 we, and I, we, I we'll still call it got 22. a long ways to go. Yeah. Yeah. We're in 2022 yeah. pretty Christ. much. Yeah, yeah. Okay. and people would say I just blew up overnight. Um, it's a long so ass night. Don't do it. If you do it, stay the course. Straight like that. Well, appreciate y'all for tapping in, man. Appreciate y'all for watching. Um, make sure that you are following us on Instagram. Make sure you subscribe to our channels on, on YouTube, Nice and Neat the Podcast, on Spotify, Nice and Neat the Podcast, and also on, on Apple Podcasts. Much love, much gratitude. Appreciate you for tuning in, man. Until next time, I'm Duke. I'm Omar. I'm Jalan. I'm Melvin Gray. And that's that on that. Peace. I'll be the one to take the risk to go and get them bands. I'll be the one to never sit and go and make a plan. Knowing my mother getting old and I don't got no time. Gotta keep a couple for the road or else get left behind. Yeah. To the hundreds, pledge allegiance, I stand.